This much oh. eggs are probably done. Oh my god. Okay. Oh, they're overdone. Damn. Sorry, they're bullets. <laughs> you want to put it somewhere? You can put one here. I don't mind eating a bullet. You do, do you have a violent objection to a bullet? No. I'll fix the rest of the Put it on there? Sure. Grace, a bullet? A bullet would be lovely. A bullet or a bomb? Um, or you can wait. Do you want to wait and get a soft one? My whole thing is break the toast in half and have poached egg on half and marmalade on the other half. That's just ultimate. What is that? I want to oh, there's four people. Have my bullet. Yeah. Oh, oh, I'm making one for Grace. I'm making another one for Grace. No, 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 I'll just have one later. I always, I always said we should live in a house where you could run around the house three times naked and nobody would mind. Nobody would mind or nobody would see? Well, nobody would see, I guess. We were two artists joining together. And, um, but we decided it was worth the risk. So we did it, and we're still feeling our way through it. We've always had two very separate workshops, and the one thing that brings us together is the, the store or the catalogue or the brochure and the way of life, really. So we just feel so strongly that people ought to have things that are useful, that they love, and they'll use on a daily basis, whether it's a cereal bowl or a mug or a teapot or <clears throat> table and chairs. Drink it. Now I just have to make sure that this is like a, the back of a nape of a neck to make sure that it's just really got strength to it. There we go, that's better. Oh, brilliant. So that goes in the fridge for the day. You go and sit and think about itself and then you burn its ass off. <laughs> The most blissful evening is when the fire's going and then nothing's happening and we're just sitting there and we're just reading or whatever and you know never have. <laughs> it does happen. I read more than you do when you're yes, sitting there quietly. Yes, because I'm busy chatting or... Two on the phone. Or... No, no, I'm not. You're the one who's chatting on the phone. So there's Charlie as a glass blower in those days. And this is the pottering shop. I don't know if there's any pictures of me in here because I took all <coughs> the photos. There were a lot of people at art school who were very dedicated about their craft and very serious about their craft. Now, Winky was serious about her craft, but she was much more, you could say, in a grand way, a woman of the world. There was, uh, I was pretty, I wasn't sort of arrogant, but I definitely had a, a shield around me, which uh, she was able to break through. This is kind of exciting. We're going to make a loaf of bread in the oven and a loaf of bread over the fire. Oh, that is exciting, actually. So how are you going to start we the, the loaf of bread? I, I'm going to send a, a photograph to okay, whatever so his name was. The winner, the winner of this one, of these two rounds, then the third loaf will then be baked in whatever works better. Okay. My aesthetic was surfers, big shoulders, blonde, blue-eyed, and you know, this guy was sort of walking profile English gent, <laughs> really uptight. I mean, he was sort of whispering in corridors and go blushing red every time he met him, and I was hanging out in the bar, <laughs> being some surf chick from Australia. I mean, and we were just poles apart. <laughs> Thank you.
Boom. Bang! <laughs> Hi, Twiddles. Oh. <laughs> What's the when, about when Charlie's in a good mood, it's wonderful. No, I think it's good. So Charles, that's for you. So we're successfully back in our chairs. That's, that's the word on the cake. And they're coming up with this. <laughs> really? Oh yeah. I don't feel any different. <laughs> well, perhaps we better not go there. She used to come and visit all the time, but we used to also talk on the phone all the time. Those are the days when cheap phones were after 11 o'clock at night. The bizarre thing was that at that time I was making a bed. So I would ring her up every night after I'd finished doing my woodworking, making this bed for myself, and talk to her all about this bed. Every night we'd talk to her on the telephone. He had about four girlfriends on the go at that stage, and I just thought he was just a slut, basically, and said, Charlie, you can't treat girls like that. It's just shocking. But she came up with a friend of hers one weekend and I pretty much felt like barfing all weekend. It was the most bizarre experience. We drove to a party about 10 miles away, and at the, we went to a pub and had a bit for beers and things, mm. and then we went back to the friend's house. Something made me stand up and walk across the room, and I went over to Winky and said, um, you're falling in love, aren't you? Oh, my God. That's why I'm feeling so sick. It was just like, it was just an ins, it was so innocent, it was ridiculous. It was just like, oh, I am falling in love with them. It was almost like someone was planting a story from a book into you. Are we going to make two pizzas, one after the other, and then sit down and enjoy them? Yes. That's like what that. we're going to do. We're going to make two pizzas, one immediately after the other, and then enjoy a meal. Like Next one. So, big decision now. I know. Charlie? Where's Charlie sitting? I sit at the end down here. Get past the paparazzi. Okay, folks, I'm sitting down and eating dinner. I'm gonna go. Oh my god, that's amazing. Winky, you gotta come and sit down. Looks like you're praying. I am praying for you to sit down. <sighs>